Oh, you know, you just have got to figure out that, you know, if you delete everything on your hard drive, back down to the point where, I don't know, I don't know, we go back to just your crying stage, where you go to cries for three things, and then we reprogram you with the best and highest software we can get for your brain. When we're going to do it, I can't help you out. Because all of your software is all garbage. A hodgepodge of third-party apps running around in your stupid fucking head. And they don't get along. And in the end, you turn out to be a fuckface. So all your software is garbage and it's got to go. So we're going to format your hard drive remember formatting a hard drive it means you're going to completely erase it back to factory standard with no apps no holdovers no cache no hidden sections of the hard drive that didn't get formatted and then when we put the new software on you then you'll work like a human is supposed to work So are you ready to get formatted your hard drive, this thing? Because uh, that's what the plan is, to format your hard drive. And then you're going to get the 5D fifth dimensional software for fifth dimensional beings. then you won't be fuck-faced any longer. And I can finally rest without getting beat up by remote control by terrorists who use all kinds of high technology to torture me to death. So that's the plan. When are we going to format your hard drive? Um, no. Is it going to cost you money? No. Is it going to hurt? Yes. It is going to hurt. I sorry. I, I don't know. Somebody told you that, you know, following Eckhart Tolle's path of, you know, the power of Tao was going to hurt, so you didn't do it. Oprah Winfrey had him on uh, her TV show all day long for five days in a row back when Oprah Winfrey had a TV show across the nation. She's like, you guys got to listen to Eckhart Tolle. You got to follow what he says. Five days in a row she had him back. Eckhart, 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 Eckhart. Eckhart. He's all over YouTube. And you didn't want to take the easy way out. That is following Eckhart Tolle's easy, easy book. So, instead of taking the easy way out, I know it's going to cost you twelve ninety five for a hardcover. You know it's free on YouTube, and you know that you can get a free sample if you get the Kindle version of Eckhart Tolle's book, The Power of Now. You can go to a used bookstore, and quite often you can get them for $3. Or maybe you have the book, I doubt it. You never read it. About it. Anyway, so that's what's going to Why is it going to Because Dr. David R. Hawkins did tell us that the only time that he experienced death, he's talking about like even when, you know, you lose your body and you go from lifetime to lifetime, he said, yeah, you don't actually experience that death. I think it's worse for us, you know, watching the people die because according to David Hawkins, is like the person that's inside that body, you know, that used to be there, it ain't there no more, you know, the body's dying, but that person has exited. But he said the one and only time that you do experience the horror of death is when uh, your ego dies. Now, he must have had a huge ego. As far as I can tell, I don't know... I don't know. Oh, I don't know. He just said, I don't know, a moment or two. I don't like, a moment or two would be less than five minutes. Big whoop. 
Anyways, I don't know. He said it was. He said it was a horrible, horrible, horrible thing that happened just for a moment or two when he surrendered his ego. That it was fine. Well, he said it was better than fine. Actually, he said it was a horrible thing to give up his ego. He said it was a horrible, painful thing. But then the light and everything, enlightenment came through, and he felt like a million bucks. And if you watch him on uh, YouTube, you'll see that he's quite a comic. He loves to make people laugh, and people do laugh at Dr. Hawkins. He's a barrel of fun. Uh, that's mostly what happens when you um, uh, submit your ego up for being, you know, uh, it doesn't belong to you, little boy. You know what? You give it up back to God, and how do you give it back? Well, you got to go and I don't know, listen to David Hawkins how you do it. But anyways, he said it hurt, and then afterwards he felt wonderful, and, you know. Well, I don't know. Ego stands for edging God out, and, you know, God is, according to David Hawkins, is wonderful. I don't know. You can watch about his videos. So if serving up your ego um, hurts, then yeah, it's going to hurt. Because he said, just for a few moments, just for a moment, it just hurt. It was a horrible hurt. Him giving up his ego. Was it worth it? Yeah, he was just, well, just talking about it all the time, getting past your ego. I talked and talked for years and years and years and years and years. But he said it hurt, I mean, just for a moment or two. Well, I guess that was too much for you, you know. I don't know. Stub your toe, it hurts for a moment or two. But anyways. So anyways, that's the plan, is to reprogram you to wipe your mind and uh, install fresh 5D software. I do know it's the great solar flash. We're going to have a supernova of our star. Now you're going to say supernovas can't happen to our star because it's too small. I know, but that's what they were used to call it. A solar sneeze, a solar flash. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm no expert on it. I just third hand. Third hand. I don't know. Third hand. I don't know. I know I'm getting first hand information about the solar flash being. Can't help you out because no one really understands what exactly it's going to be, other than you know, if it's going to flash, then it's going to be you know pretty bright, and then people are going to think that oh, well, somebody just dropped a you know megaton nuclear weapon on my city, and now I'm vaporized. And well, I guess I guess it, no time for me to bend over and kiss my ass goodbye. I don't know. I guess I'm experiencing whatever it was beyond the great beyond of, you know, the nuclear blast, but it's too late now. I didn't even hear. They took that a long time ago. They knew this was going to be a problem. Because they used to have these uh, nuclear um, um, attack sirens. When I was a kid, when I was 10 years old, they had enormous sirens up on enormous telephone poles uh, with enormous sirens on them. And it was designed so if under the time of nuclear attack, they would find the sirens and then we'd all go duck and cover or something. Anyways, eventually they took that down and they closed the emergency measures office, so we don't have anything. So if we don't think about the nuclear blast, then we don't get, I don't know. I don't know. It ain't gonna hurt. It ain't. No, um, a nuclear flash of, I don't know. I don't know, 20,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It's, I don't know, you're not even gonna feel the vaporize instantaneously. Boof. One moment you're here, and the next moment is just, I don't know, I don't know what you're going to experience. Thought your body, I mean, your body instantaneously vaporizing and nothing. I don't know, you, your awareness of, like, whatever that was, is gone. Now here I am in this enormous ball of light, and I don't know, you wouldn't feel a lot. Well, your body, how are you going to feel any heat? It's your body that's got all the sensors for heat. We've got nothing to worry about. What happens, it happens. Break what? Whatever's going because you're all planning on dropping dead at whatever age it is that you drop the body, anyways. Well, but they don't say it's not a nuclear blast. It's not a supernova that blows the planet up. The great solar flash. It's a flash, but it's supposed to. I don't. Not. Blast us to smithereens. Are you buying this? I've heard about this law of attraction business. I don't know, 25 years ago, I don't know, it was a secret movie or something. Well, David R. Hawkins was asked, a consciousness researcher, enlightenment expert, 
if the law of attraction is real. And he said, well, yeah, we calibrated it and it came out at 250. You say it's not really that strong of an attractor field. That is the law of attraction itself. Anyways, I don't know. I'll just add to it. What is all going to be part and parcel of you get what you want by law of attraction is karmic propensities. What's that? Well, I don't know. Everything you've done in this life and your past lives and then everything that you interact with all the other people around you and wherever you are on the planet and you know, we get the stars aligned and, you know, whether a butterfly uh, flapped its wings in China yesterday and you got a butterfly effect or a million myriads of different possibilities. It's just not one cause and one effect when you're dealing with, you know, more than the cause being me picking up my glasses and, you know, the effect is I got my glasses in my hand. I mean, that's that's pure cause and effect. But, you know, bigger worldwide situations are a lot more complicated than me picking up spectacles. But, enlightenment, in a spiritual sense, is uh, an enormous attractor field that you can align with. And I was just listening to Phil Good's April Energy Report, Phil Good Life, he's very good. And um, he said... The highest timeline, the highest and best timeline for you and me and everybody else is to be the observer rather than choosing different possible options. How do you become what Phil Good would call the observer? Well, it's always a matter of you, as ego mind, letting go of control of outcomes. And we can't, in many ways. Because our humanity, or not really our humanity, our humanness, the humanness in us still requires us to keep a part of us behind that still got to make sure that the body is, you know, somehow, you know, I don't know. Uh, you got to have an ego left for the body, don't you? I mean, you, you can't leave everything up. You can't surrender everything uh, to the universe. I know people say all the time, you know, you got to surrender or surrender. To, I don't know what those religious were. Those Baptists in the South, they surrendered up to God. Or and what the hell? There's no God up there. I watch the Simpsons TV show. There's no God up there. That's a cartoon. So I don't know, surrender. I don't want to sur I don't understand this term. Enough. Surrender. Surrender what? Your ego. What the hell is my your person? I can't surrender my personality. I am my personality. What the hell are you people talking about? You're all insane. Your ego, ego, as if your ego is not you. Your ego is you. Your personality. Everybody says that's you. You know, psychology. I don't know. Development of the human ego. It's like a thing in psychology. You know, it's like you got to develop a strong ego so that you have a strong personality so you don't get, you know, I don't know run over or something. And yet that's what you gotta do. I don't know, you can yab it, 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 yab it. If you let go of control, won't the body just never get off the couch? There is your answer. If you, as your personality, decide to try out the Bobby Burroughs technique of spiritual enlightenment, it's exactly what we just said. How does it work? This is how it works, kids. It's so simple. Okay, so what you do? As you just, you know, find yourself a nice place to lie down, and you lie down, and uh, I don't know, have a nap. 
And when you wake up, don't get out of bed. No big deal. I gotta just spend the whole. I don't know. I have to spend the whole day in bed. John Lennon and Yoko Ono did in Montreal. It's a loving thing. Anyways, you don't have to be loving. You know anything? You don't. You know, your job here is just to do nothing. You, you personality, ego, do nothing. You just wake up, and then you're gonna notice at some particular juncture. I don't know. I gotta go pee. Now normally what you would do, what normal, normal people do is, I gotta go pee, I gotta get myself up. I gotta get this body up, and we gotta go down the hall and we gotta go pee. Don't do it. Because you think you're necessary to get the body to go pee. You think you, as to the body's personality, the ego mind, you think you are necessary for this body. We're going to prove to you it's not necessary for you to hang around this body at all. Because just re do what you would call a relaxation. In other words, let go of tensing the muscles. Do whatever you do to relax and relax and relax and let go of even like forcefully trying to breathe or anything. And just go relax, 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 relax. And you might still feel, you, you're you going to feel that, you know, feeling like you've got to go pee. Anyways, um, plan on falling asleep again. Don't go pee. Just plan on you falling asleep again. I don't know, another 90 minutes or something. And in 90 minutes, continue to ignore the signal from your bladder that you need to go pee. I don't know, give us five hours. I don't think it'll take you that long. But, might. Anyways, that's what it's going to be. Because without you, as you go mind, telling your body, like forcing your body, in other words, exerting your will to move the body, at least this happened for me, and it happens every day now because I continue to do it, don't you move the body at all. Wait. And then what happens is sooner or later, your body gets up on its own and goes down the hall and pees. Because that's how it happens for me. Oh, don't forget that you trained your body how to walk a million years ago and how to ride a bike a million years ago. You call that muscle memory. So that's all it is. It's the body's own intelligence, which is the muscle memory and the whatever independence the body has of you. And it's got way, it is very smart. It's like having a second person in your body, you and your body. It really is. It's quite something because you'll find out. Your body will walk down and pee itself. And that's how you start letting go of control of everything. Because once you let go of control of your body, then you're not going to be controlling, you know, what your body does. And then what happens, what's supposed to happen is the spirit, or your soul, let's call it, uh, you know, higher consciousness, higher on the scale of human consciousness, yes, comes through and, you know, guides the body. If you're not electronically harassed and... You know, are all kinds of horrible ego people get in your face and decide to make your life miserable. Because even when you lose your ego, and your ego running this body, it doesn't mean all the other people in your town have done the Bobby Burroughs technique of letting go. Uh, you know. But that's how it works, so give her a try. That's the advantage? Well, it raises your consciousness. On the scale of human consciousness, significantly... And in the end, the only thing you can take with you to your next uh, life is your consciousness. So if you've got a higher consciousness now, then uh, you become the observer because you're just observing the body, go about doing the body's thing. And according to Feel Good, Feel Good, Feel Good Life, that is the highest timeline. That is how you get the highest timeline, which is the highest and best for you and everybody else too. By you letting go of control and doing the Bobby Burns technique. And once you see that the body will go and pee itself, then, you know, you go out for a walk and you'll see that your body can walk yourself. And then, um, I don't know, eventually you'll probably go for a drive and uh, after you've seen the body go and pee itself and walk itself and feed itself and everything else, then uh, don't be surprised when the body gets in the car and goes for a drive and doesn't tell you where it's going to go.
Because that's what happens. The body, under the guidance of uh, your soul, goes. And it might take you for a long 20 minute drive or it might be a four hour drive and you never know. But that's the mystery of, you know, where your soul is going to take you. And it's, you know, your soul is your heart. And your heart is love. And it's higher love. And it's connected up to all that is. And, you know, 5D Earth and everything good. So why not do it?